Hi, my name is Dr. Miles Monroe, and I want to talk to you about living effectively. Do you know that the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but life without a reason? It is so dangerous to be alive and not know why you were born. You see, the deepest craving in the heart of the human spirit is to find a sense of significance and relevance. The search for relevance in life is the ultimate pursuit of all of us. One of the greatest problems in the world today is that the world seems to be an earth without a purpose. After all, purpose is the master of motivation. It is the mother of commitment. It is the very source of enthusiasm and the womb of perseverance. Purpose gives birth to hope and it instills in all of us a passion to act in life. I am convinced that until purpose is discovered, existence has no meaning. Because purpose is the source of fulfillment. Do you know there are millions of people in the world today who perhaps are living every day but they have no reason for waking up in the morning. They are busy, they are active, they are dedicated, they are famous and faithful people who are accepted and respected and revered and admired maybe. But deep inside they are frustrated and depressed. You see, human beings, no matter how they are or where they live, they all want to be successful. No amount of accomplishment can replace the power and the motivation of finding your own personal niche in the working of life towards your dream. Fulfilling purpose must be the primary goal of every person. But the question is, what is purpose? You see, everything in life has purpose. Let's consider, for example, the electric fan. If it were possible for us to enter the mind of the person who invented the product, we might see a desire and an intent to circulate or move air to produce a cooling effect. This would be the dream of the one who invented the fan. Uh, this intent would be to establish both as a desired result and a predetermined purpose for the product, which is the first stage of production. You see, all things begin and end with purpose. Your purpose is an integral part of you. It is like the manufacturer who created the electric fan for a specific purpose. Even so, God created you for a specific definite intent in his mind. Your existence is evidence that there is a generation that needs something that you contain. Your personal fulfillment is possible only if you discover and complete the purpose and destiny for which you were born. That's why you must strive to be who you were and to be what you were born to be. I believe uh, that one of the most important things that you can do in life is to actually discover that dream that God has for your life. You know, there are so many people today who are not sure why they wake up every morning. The book of Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21 says, and written by a politician, a king, his name was Solomon, he says, many are the plans in a man's heart. But it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. This very simple statement, I believe, embodies the spirit of the cause of birth for all men. It says that all of us have in our own hearts our own plans. What we want to do, what we want to be, where we want to go, what kind of vocation we want in life. We want to have our own dream, our own passion for our reasons, for our decisions. The Bible says you get many plans of what you want to do in life. But God has a purpose for your life. And God's purpose for your life is really the only thing that can satisfy you. Here's what Solomon says. Solomon says, God has a purpose for your life in spite of your plans, and that purpose will prevail over your plans. That statement teaches three things. One, it says that purpose is more important than plans. Secondly, it means that purpose prevails or has more power than your plans. And thirdly, purpose precedes plans. Uh, what is purpose then? To God, purpose is more important than the plans you made for your life. Purpose is that reason, that intent, just like the maker of the fan, uh, that cause, that result that is intended. And your life was a result of God having an intent and a reason for your life. You were created because there's something God wanted that required your life. I put it this way. The question is then, why 
am I here? And why was I born? I believe that question must be answered because it is the key to expressing and being and fulfilling yourself. You see, the word of God says, the purposes of a man's heart are like deep waters and a man of understanding draws them out. Proverbs 25. Let me talk for you, with you then for a moment about the principles of purpose. Number one, the human need for personal meaning and satisfaction is universal. What does that mean? That means that in every human being, we all have a desire to be and to feel important and to feel significant. Every human being was born and created for a reason. And that reason is what gives you the drive to want to do something in life. Secondly, personal fulfillment is the only true measure of success. Let me talk about that for a moment. You know, if I invited you to my house and, and ask you to come and live with me for a few weeks and, and then one day I decide to go out and visit some friends and, and ask you to wash the dishes for me. And uh, of course what you do is you go in the kitchen and uh, you would take, of course, uh, the assignment that I gave you and you begin to think about what to do. And then you begin to mop the floor, wax the floor, clean the floor, buff the floor. Matter of fact, the tiles become so beautiful that it's as if they were brand new. And you spent hours waxing and buffing and cleaning that floor. And then I return home and you come to me and you're excited and you tell me what you did. And I look at the floor, of course I'm impressed. And I'm really, uh, just can't believe how immaculate you made the floor. And then I look up from the floor and I look at the dishes and they are yet unclean. I ask you a question. What did you do? Well, of course, you cleaned the floor. Second question, did you do a good job? Yes, you did an excellent job on the floor. Did you work hard? Yes, you worked hard. But did you do what I asked you to do? The answer is no. You see, purpose has to do with the original intent for what you were assigned to do. You did a good thing, but you didn't do the right thing. Purpose has to do with the right thing. You can work hard and work uh, meticulously and, and put out all your effort, but if you don't do the reason for your life, if you don't accomplish what you were born to do, you've really wasted your time, your energy, your resources, and you've literally caused life to become a waste of your own experience. That's what purpose really is. God says many are the plans in your heart, but his purpose will prevail. Can I then suggest to you that it's possible for you to, to work hard at life and to do all that you possibly can and yet not do what you were born to do? It's like uh, someone buying a, an electric fan that we talked about. And they take this fan and they use it maybe to cool... Um, food or something, or maybe they use it to, to use as a propeller on a boat. Now, they may be using it for a reason, but it's not for the purpose for which it was made. And that's exactly how most people live their lives. We live our lives not knowing why we were created, and so we are busy doing all these other activities, and in the end, we didn't do what we were born to do. You see, fulfilling purpose must be the primary goal of every person. That is the key to your life. Why? Because everything in life has purpose. Let me mention for a moment that God created everything for a reason. God in his mind created the birds and the flowers and the sun and the moon and the earth and the mountains and the rivers. All of these were created for a purpose. And God is not going to measure success by anything else except what he created a thing to do. That is why purpose always precedes production. Uh, let me mention another point about your life. You see, I believe that purpose itself is the kind of, of generation of energy that makes you feel a sense of meaning and a sense of reason for breathing. Everybody is looking for some cause for their lives. That's why people commit suicide. Because they can't find a reason for living anymore. That's why people begin to feel that they are empty and there's no reason for them waking up in the morning. They have no purpose. 
all things begin and end with purpose. God created you with a definite purpose in mind. And that purpose is what's on God's mind. I'll be back in a moment to talk to you about how you can capture the spirit of your reason for living. Stay tuned. You know, everything that was created was specifically designed to fulfill a specific intent. And the design is equal to the purpose for which it was made. Purpose, therefore, informs and reveals the nature and the responsibilities of a thing. Everything you naturally have and inherently are is necessary for you to fulfill your purpose. Your height, your race, your skin color, your language, your physical features, and intellectual capacity are all designed for your purpose. You are perfect for what you were born to do. That's why you should never try to be like anybody else. Secondly, purpose is individual. You are the way you are because of why you are. You are unique. In essence, there is something about you that literally only you can perform. And you came to this planet to do that specific thing that the world needs in this generation. Thirdly, purpose is not only inherent, but it's also multiple. You see, you can have more than one phase of purpose. You were born for a purpose, but it may be a multiplicity of manifestations. Take for myself. You know, I find myself being a teacher. Sometimes I am a designer. Sometimes I'm a musician. Sometimes I'm involved in communication with government leaders. Other times I'm in a classroom with students. Then the times when I'm involved in artwork. And all my talents and gifts are built into me to accomplish what I was born to do. And the same thing is true of the multiplicity of timing of purpose. There was a phase in my life when I did certain things and then they changed and I started doing something else. And each one of those phases prepared me for the ultimate purpose in my life. Uh, It's possible, therefore, that what I'm doing now is not the end of what I will do. But this is an important part of my purpose. And whatever your hand finds to do, the Bible says, you must do it with all your might. Fourthly, purpose is interdependent. Uh, What does that mean? That means purpose cannot be fulfilled in isolation. Let me talk about that for a moment. Uh, If you were to think about a battery, the battery in your car's engine was created for the purpose of storing power. It was created for preserving the potential power to start the car's engine. Now that battery has its clear purpose. And yet, that battery cannot work without submitting to the ignition or to the terminal wires that pull that power out of the battery. In other words, the battery itself is isolated and it's an individual product, but the battery also depends on the other parts of the engine to fulfill its purpose. And this is exactly true about you and I. Even though we are individual, there's no one like us. Our fingerprint is distinct and we are different in every way. Even so, we depend on other people and they depend on us to literally fulfill our reason for living. I'm talking to you right now in your home or perhaps in your office or maybe in some classroom where you're watching this video or television program. And you know, deep inside, could you imagine if I did not fulfill what I was born to do, I could not share with you these important principles to help you. But there's a cameraman who is helping me also carry out the work that I'm doing to help you. And so I depend on him and he depend on me and together we serve you. Therefore, my purpose is different from the cameraman's purpose. His gifts and talents are different from mine. But when they come together, they create a beautiful system of communication to help you. And so we need each other. My eye cannot hear. My nose cannot see. And each one of my parts of the body are different. Different purposes, but interdependent. So the eye depends on the air to hear the car that it sees. The nose depends on the air to hear the, the, the sound of the train and the smell of the fumes that are coming down the track. And so it is. We need one another. And as we talk about this, I want you to remember that your purpose is not isolated. You are not born to live alone. You were born to contribute to the human race and to give something that only you could give. 
purpose is not only interdependent, but it's permanent. And what does that mean? That means purpose is something that no one can take from you. Whatever you were born to do, no one else can do for you. Not only that, but you are stuck with the reason why God gave you birth. I think about people like um, Moses. Moses made a lot of mistakes. You know, Moses is one of the greatest leaders that the children of Israel ever had. And over 5,000 years ago, this man was a murderer. He killed a man and he hid him in the sand. But deep in Moses' heart was a purpose to set his people free. Moses always wanted to see the people set free from slavery. And he tried to do it by himself. And in the process, he killed a human being and became a fugitive. But do you know that that burden and that vision and that purpose in his heart never died? God still had that purpose for Moses' life. And 40 years later, God comes to this man, meets him in the wilderness, and God tells this man the same thing that was in his heart. Why? Because purpose is permanent. No matter what mistakes you make, God will always maintain his commitment to what he created you to do. Moses' mistake could not cancel his purpose. God said, Moses, go and do exactly what you always wanted to do. Go and set the people free. Moses, of course, felt the way you and I feel when we fail. Maybe you have committed abortion. Maybe you yourself was born out of wedlock. Maybe you have been a drug addict or perhaps an alcoholic. Maybe you've been a victim of a divorce or a broken home. Or maybe you yourself are a divorcee. But whatever the case may be, it doesn't stop the purpose for which God created you. You see, no matter what your experiences are, they do not cancel your reason for being created. Moses still caught his purpose. After 40 years as a fugitive, God sent him back to do what he was born to do. I call you today back to what you were created to do. Don't be afraid of believing in the dream God put in your heart. You see, purpose is resilient. Purpose transforms mistakes into miracles and disappointments into testimonies. God's purpose for your life is not hindered by your past. Because what you've done can never stop what you can do. And finally, I want to tell you that purpose is universal. Do you know that most of humanity has lost sight of our universal purpose? Like the Dead Sea, where I just visited a few months ago, we are to fulfill our purpose. But if we don't, then our lives become lost and empty. You see, the Dead Sea doesn't give water. That's why it's called the Dead Sea. But the Sea of Galilee that flows into the Dead Sea is always full of life. There's algae, there's fish, there's living creatures there. But the Dead Sea doesn't give any of itself away. Your life was created by God to literally give your life to this generation. You were born to do something that no one else can do. We need what you were born to do. And whether you feel that you're no longer important is irrelevant now. Because God still believes in you. God trusts you. And your past mistakes is forgiven. God loves you. And he cares for you. And he wants you to know that whatever you may seem to have done in the past, his love for you brings you back to your destiny. Believe in God's purpose for your life. Trust what he tells you. Because you are not a mistake. Remember, you were born for a purpose, with a purpose, to fulfill purpose in your generation. Trust God and believe in him. After all, that's why Jesus came to this earth. Jesus died on the cross to restore you back to God so that you can discover why you were born. And nobody can keep you away from what God gave you birth to do. Will you do it right now? Will you believe in what God called you to do? By the way, call the number on the screen and ask somebody to share with you, to pray with you, and to talk with you. And I believe that what you are desiring is what we're all looking for, purpose in life. This is Dr. Miles Monroe saying thank you for joining me today.